How to set up your own Europlatus incubator. This also works pretty well for Felsuma and other genera with calcified eggs. First thing you'll need is a deli cup with a few holes punched in it for ventilation. Be wary of the size of the holes because some species are small enough to fit through after hatching. Next, you'll either need two small bottle caps for each egg or one large one for both. These will serve as platforms for our eggs to rest on above moist media. Long fiber dried sphagnum moss isn't necessary, but I want to show you guys a little tip I use it for. Next up is some perlite. You can pretty much buy it at any gardening store. This is going to be the media we use for the incubator. You'll want to have some labels handy to make note of which of your animals produce the eggs as well as the date that you found them. With regards to a writing utensil, I like to use a black sharpie pen. The last thing you'll need is a small amount of water and this will use to hydrate the media for the incubation process. Alright, let's put this incubator together. The first thing we're going to do is place perlite into the deli cup. The perlite will serve as an incubation media that retains the humidity for the incubation process. Give it a nice little shake to level it out. Next thing we're going to do is pour in our water. As long as the water line is a little less high than the level of perlite, you should be good. The amount of water in the container should be relatively generous because we hope to achieve a relative humidity of 100%. Next, pour some dry perlite into the bottle caps and set them into the container. Remember, this perlite needs to be dry. Now take that sphagnum moss and lay it down over the perlite surrounding the bottle caps. Next, you'll take the time to fill out your label. I usually write down the species name, the female that produced the clutch, and the day that I found the eggs. Next, place the label on the deli cup. Before we place the eggs into each bottle cap, I like to dig out the perlite to create a little snug space for each egg to be placed. Now we're ready to go retrieve our eggs. Make sure you do this with utmost care, as eggs can be quite delicate. Exercise caution when handling eggs, and remember that the wrong amount of pressure could result in a cracked egg. If I find clutches in the back of enclosures, I usually like to bring them to a clear space in the front before moving them into the incubator. This ended up being a super rare case where I actually missed a previous clutch laid by this female. So, why the moss you might ask? Sphagnum will not only help retain humidity, but it also offers some soft surfaces for babies to shed against if you don't find them right when they hatch. Calcified or hard-shelled gecko eggs are best incubated a little differently than soft-shelled or permeable eggs. That's because permeable eggs are better at regulating the transfer of direct moisture to hydrate the embryo within its walls. An embryo inside a hard-shelled egg doesn't have that option and could possibly drown in the same situation. As such, it's best to incubate on dry media with 100% relative air humidity and we achieve this by keeping the eggs on dry perlite separated from the wet perlite by the bottle caps we place them on. Voila! The miracle of life. Here we have a baby Europlatus fantasticus emerging from its egg. If you follow the instructions in this video to make your Europlatus incubator, and place it in a location with temperatures set to a range between 65 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit, you should observe hatching between 95 and 160 days, depending on the species. Remember, there are exceptions to that time, and you should never give up on any egg. Give that baby gecko the time it deserves to hatch. And there you have it. Now you know how to incubate Europlatus eggs. Hope this system works as great for you as it does for me. And don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.